Um, let's see here. Oh, iPhone news. Before we get out of here. Before we get out of here. I want to show you all something. So, we got word today that Apple, that's correct, Apple on the iPhone 16 series. Now, it's getting close, it's getting close to nut cutting time, right? Um, iPhone traditionally launches in September. So we're roughly three months away from launch. So right now is when uh, they're getting all of these suppliers in line. Well, no, that, that that's already done. Right now, signed, sealed, delivered with all the suppliers uh, as far as the parts, right? There's hundreds of parts, as you can tell. They go inside. Look, there's, there's a part supplier for just this little metal piece. There's a part supplier for the screws. There's a part supplier for the battery. There's a part supplier for the heat sink, for the speaker, for the cameras, everything. So by now, iPhone 16, they've signed, sealed, and delivered all the suppliers. Boom. And they're going to start manufacturing these, actually producing them for consumers probably this time next month, right? And I think this is why this news is leaking. Or maybe they've started right now, or maybe they will next week. I don't know, but sometime very, very, very soon. Remember, if the day they launch and they sell 100 million iPhones worldwide that day or in that first week, they need to ship 100 million cell phones. You cannot produce, manufacture 100 million cell phones overnight. It takes months. It takes a few months to do that. So they're probably, actually, they might have started already because the amount, uh, uh, Apple is just on a whole nother level when it comes to uh, 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 amount of sales, right? They sell, I think it was 188 million iPhones last in the year of 2020, 2023. 188 million don't quote me on that but it's somewhere around there samsung i think look it's a lot right it's a lot it's a lot of devices and you got to manufacture these and it might have started already and i think this is why the news is getting out so let me shut up and get to it when's the last time iphone had a removable battery right seems like we're taking a step back but i know there's many people that would actually enjoy this uh, now it would, it would do damage to the IP rating. Like it can't be, I don't know, maybe it could be IP 68, but, um, again, this is where the EU, the European union, um, is just lambasting is just pummeling Apple with all sorts of changes. And I love it. Right. U S can't force Apple basically to do shit. Now the EU I can now. Uh, I'm not getting. I've gotten into it on previous episodes, but why is the EU forcing all of this stuff on on Apple? Right? Oh, removable batteries, USB Type C, third-party app stores. Because Apple really doesn't have any pull, any say, any lobbyists inside the European Union, the Parliament, their little board where they make rules for the Europe countries. Apple has lobbyists probably in every freaking nook and cranny in Washington and in, in the state's capitals as well. Apple gives money to Republicans. Apple gives money to Democrats. Every Everybody. So when and if they are elected, um, Apple says, hey, hey, we donated half a million dollars to your campaign. Remember that vote? Well, uh, or, or you, you remember that favor um, uh, you owe us? Well, we need it now. So that's why nothing can get done when it comes to inside the U.S. And this is why the EU is forcing all these changes. Because they don't give a damn. Um, so the EU is basically going to tell them, hey, we need removable batteries. Now, I don't know why they're targeting Apple. Um, I th- I'm going to look into this a little more because I was trying to find out... Is this going to be on all phones or is this just on uh, iPhones, right? Or Apple products? I don't know. Um, Let's see. 
So it says there's a new report from a publication called The Information it claims that Apple's redesigning iPhone batteries to make them easier to replace. Now, the move is in response to the EU European Union regulations that require smartphone makers to make batteries that are easily replaceable by 2025. So it sounds like all uh, smartphones, which would include Samsung, which would include uh, a Pixel, nothing, OnePlus. So the iPhone 15 battery is currently really, really, really hard to take out, right? It is. It's a pain. I used to repair phones. It's a pain in the ass. And it, it was hard. I don't think I've done a 15, but it's it's they're glued to the inside of the phone. You got to take out this super, super, super sticky strip of of adhesive. I mean, it is a pain in the ass. And they do that on purpose because they want you to get fed up with it. They want you, well, they don't want you to attempt it, right? They want you to bring it to an Apple repair center and have them replace it, right? Apple wants your money. But if you attempt, if you're like me and you're like, let me see if I can do it myself. (laughs) And you attempt to do it and you get halfway through it and you're like, man, screw this. I can't, you know, I'm going to take it in. That was their plan all along. Yes, that was their plan all along. They want you to bring it to them. So Apple is working on a new technology called electric, electrically induced adhesive debonding. Right, bonding is the pairing, is the coming together. You bond two things together. Obviously, debonding, you know, pull it apart. So it looks like it's very cool tech. So it looks like. I googled this term and it looks really cool. It looks I just activated my search. It it looks like you can it's a strip of, of adhesive. Like I was telling you how it's so hard to pull out, pull off the the original uh, iPhone batteries. This adhesive with the iPhone 16 series is basically going to have like a little like a charging port or it's going to have some sort of connector. I mean, we're talking very minuscule. However, some super 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 small connectors you have it's gonna have a, a ground well i might be already have a ground but so maybe you'll just have to um uh, anyways whatever you're gonna plug one or two little tiny wires up to it into a little connector and you just give a little charge and then it'll the adhesive will magically deactivate i guess you should say now when replacing the battery you put a new battery in you hook up the little connector, or may already be hooked up, and you give it a little spark, a little charge, well, not a spark, but you know what I'm saying, uh, a little a little jolt. No, this is a very minuscule electricity to it. it does not, it's not like you need electricity from the wall, right? You're not, we're not talking about 120 volts. There's a very, very, very little uh, jolt of it, like maybe one, two, three, four, five volts. Uh, and then, boom, it'll go back to adhesive. It's so, so, so very cool. Um, this is the stuff I geek out about, but very cool. Now, I don't know if they've patented this. Um, it sounds like a badass idea. Now, here's the other thing. Wouldn't it be cool if they did the same thing with the back plate? Because if you remove a battery, they have glass on the back of these devices. If you've ever broken your phone or the back glass of a phone, you know, it's not an easy fix, right? Um... Taking that bad glass off is hard as hell. And if you take it to a repair store, trust me, it's hard as hell. They even fight with it. Um, if they could do this same sort of adhesion, this little, what is it called? Um, electrically induced adhesive debonding. If they could put a little strip around the back of the iPhone where it makes it easy to remove the back plate you know what would be cool is if they connected that little connector that activates the adhesive and deactivates the adhesive it would be cool if they could route that inside to the charging port um and then you had to have the technician or anybody had to have a special usb type c connector that all it's good for is activating and deactivating that adhesive so you don't have to like sit there and heat it up and then try to pry it open or, you know what I'm saying? Um, that would be very, very cool. It's got to be right around the corner. I'm sure they've thought of it. If they've, if if Apple is um, sort of developing this cool stuff, 
I'm sure they've thought of it and they've, they've had to. Because if I'm thinking of it, you know, they, they would have to. So battery replacement at the moment is $99. If you do it yourself, it's $50. Pain in the ass. Um, so I'll have to see. Again, I haven't heard anything on Android. So if EU is making it all smartphones by 2025, which is right around the corner, I'm assuming that includes Android, right? So... That means Samsung's going to have to come up with something. OnePlus, nothing. And here's the thing. The EU is making so many changes. I don't think all the changes that they that they introduce over there. So let's say this is active and the iPhone 17 has a removable back with battery. Or 16, whatever, iPhone 16. I think Apple will only sell removable back iPhones in Europe basically make it a, a geo specific iPhone and I think the iPhones they sell here in the United States and the rest of the world are going to be like every other iPhone that you buy right not removable back I think they're going to do that because because they want you to bring the device to them right they want the money doing this encourages people like you and me to just buy a battery and change it ourselves, right? Or if you were a traveler, take two or three batteries with you, throw them in your backpack. Then you got like four or five day battery life, right? Like how cool is that? Um, but I think Samsung, Apple, not, I think all these companies, if they're forced to do this, uh, I think they're going to make location specific devices. I think, I think that's what they're going to do. I believe that's what they're going to do. Now, iPhone, that's what iPhone does with that third-party app store, right? We can't we can't access a third-party app store on Apple devices here in America or any or anywhere else in the world, Australia, Japan. It's only in Europe. Um, so I, I don't think this will be geo-specific, but um, I got a roll. And uh, thank you for joining us today. That has been the eSIM Studios podcast live stream episode number 131. All the links to everything you need and everything mentioned in the podcast are down below in our eSIM Studios uh, uh, video. So if you're watching this on Twitter, may not have all the links. If you're watching this on another YouTube channel, may not have all the links. Come to eSIM Studios YouTube channel. Hit up the links in the video description. Um, as always, I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Please be safe. Have an enjoyable Thursday afternoon. And uh, we will see you back here tomorrow, Friday. Peace out.